We'll go ahead and get started with neonatal airway management and mechanical ventilation. So there's some differences with ventilating neonates compared to adults. Um, so some differences. It's nice to have the background of adult mechanical ventilation, and then we're going to apply those concepts to neonatal mechanical ventilation. Um, this picture shows some of the commonly used ventilators with the neonates currently. Um, one thing that we don't see in this area is the eight, um, Puritan Bennett 840, or PB840, being used with neonates. Um, but it's very popular other than in South Florida. Um, Servo has come out with a new ventilator. It's called the Servo N for neonatal and pediatric patients. But then the Servo I can also be used with neonates and pediatrics. And the Avia is being used at Joe DiMaggio to ventilate infants. So you'll see those three used on infants. All right, we'll start off with first getting an airway into the neonate. Um, so with intubation, how do we choose the proper size for the laryngoscope? And the blades vary. Um, Danielle is telling me this morning, not only is there a double zero for the preemies, there's also a triple zero, so an even smaller blade that you use to visualize the cords when you're intubating. <coughs> So whatever fits to the, you want it to fit, you want the blade to fit to the back of the tongue so when you lift up, you're moving the tongue out of the way so you can visualize the cords. Um, and if the blade doesn't go to the back of the tongue, now you go to the next blade up. So how can you memorize laryngoscope size? Like a thousand has three zeros, so you would use a zero blade. Does that help? If you have like a 2.2 pound baby, you're going to use a zero. Um, a term infant to a one-year-old is a one. So if you have a baby born 40 weeks gestation, they're a normal size, you would use a laryngoscope blade size one, all the way up to about a year, laryngoscope blade size one. And then how do you choose the proper size endotracheal tube? Um, when preemies are born, so a premature would be 1,000 grams or less. Um, intubate with a 2.5 millimeter endotube, and they're using larger tubes than a 2.5 sometimes, so you could see up to a 3.5 on the preemies. A full-term neonate, you want to use a 3.5 to a 4 millimeter endotracheal tube. Could you remember the like, full term is 40 weeks, so 4.0 for the um, proper endotracheal tube? Mm -hmm. Just trying, there's so many numbers and it's hard to memorize a bunch of numbers. I mean, when you're working in the area and you get used to the same numbers day in, day out, it just becomes part of the routine. But as a student, when you're learning all, all these different populations from premature, regular gestation, all the way to pediatrics, adults, it becomes a lot of numbers. Um, so full term, 40 weeks, four millimeter endotracheal tube. Um, one year, four and a half. And then after that, there's a formula to use for um, pediatrics greater than one year of age. You take the age, you divide it by four, and then you add the number four to it, and then you get the proper size endotube for them. Um, so let's put in some numbers. Um, let's say they're two years old. What size two would you use on a two-year-old? Two. So age over four, so and two over four. Does it have? Yeah. So a 4.5. Good. All right, so children four years of age to eight years um, those are all, that's all considered a pediatric. Um, they require a cuff on their endotracheal tube because their airway is a little bit larger. For less than four years of age, just the shape of the larynx, um, it's shaped like a funnel. And the narrowest part of that funnel is the cricoid cartilage. So when you place an endotracheal tube in, that cricoid cartilage seats pretty close to the tube. Um, you're able to ventilate, get positive pressure in the lungs, you get a little bit of a leak, uh, but usually you're able to ventilate fine, even though there's no cuff on the endotracheal tube. So, um, 
By the time they're four years of age, though, they need to have a cuff. Um, you're going to see cuffs on younger babies if they have tracheal malacia. So being intubated, the endotracheal tube can rub on the sides of the trachea. Um, that can erode away or cause weakening of the cartilage in the trachea. The other thing that happens is positive pressure ventilation in the trachea um, pushing against that immature cartilage causes it to stretch and weaken. So babies that um, are intubated, they can have a larger than normal trachea because of the positive pressure and because of the tip of the endotracheal tube possibly wearing away on the side of the trachea. Um, since that happens, you end up using larger tubes than what we're starting with, but at least you have the guidelines for where to start. Um, I just need you to write a couple notes on that page. We have some room left. All right, with a small endotube size, with a small endotube size, um, there's increased resistance to airflow. There is increased resistance to airflow. This increases work of breathing. Yes. Thank you. So increased resistance to airflow causes an increase in work of breathing. So the same thing happens with adults, but because infants are tiny and we use a small endotube to intubate them, we create or we impose a much greater resistance to their breathing just by putting a tube into them. So having them just breathe on with an endotube and a T-piece would, would really make them struggle because they'd have to get their air in and out of that little tiny endotube. So just the fact that there's an endotube in there, it's an increased work of breathing. Now, pressure support helps out that increased work of breathing. So if they're breathing spontaneously, there should be some pressure support set on their pressure support dress. Um, and then the second note, um, having to do with cuffless due to the cricoid cartilage, um, an air leak will occur. An air leak will occur. This will affect ventilator graphics. This will affect ventilator graphics. and VTI slash VTE. So your inspired tidal volume is going to be greater than your exhale volume because some of the air leaks around the other two. All right, do you know where to look for volume loss in your ventilator graphics? There's two places you can find it. In the flow volume loop, that's one. Exhale Yeah, and well, in the graphics. So it would be the, the, usually the graphic on the bottom for the servo I shows volume. Mm -hmm. uh, when the volume goes in and when it comes back out, it should go back down to baseline. But if it's above baseline, that shows you right away that you've got a volume leak. So volume time graphic and the flow volume leak. Uh, it'll also affect pressure support breaths. Air leak will also affect pressure support breaths. Can you imagine why? Sorry. Uh, okay. sorry, auto triggering. Um, yeah, this one I don't have on my list. That also it also causes auto triggering. But do you remember how a pressure support breath ends? The ventilator is 